So in this getting started section, I'm going to show you how to run your own PaaS server. I'm going to explain to you what the different GitHub repos are and how they play into creating your own PaaS server. And I'm going to show you step by step how to set it up to run remotely on a platform called Heroku. I'm also going to show you a really cool project from the PaaS team called the PaaS Dashboard which will give you a nice graphical interface onto your PaaS server for you to easily manipulate data and, and change certain settings. And finally, I'm going to show you how to pre-populate your PaaS server with some sample data that I've created, which we'll be using in the rest of the sections in this course. Now the first GitHub project that you might see is actually called PaaS Server. This is the core of the PaaS Server. If I scroll down, you can see in the running PaaS Server locally section, you can easily install it and then run PaaS Server with just this simple command here. So you can use it as it is. You can just run this command um, and you can with this command you can pass in a few parameters so it's possible to configure it with its own keys or with its own database. But really when implementing your own PaaS server, you want to configure it quite a lot really. You want to really tweak it so it's got settings which are applicable to your specific use case. So to do that, we actually use PaaS server with an, another node framework called Express. Now Express is a web framework and it lets you build web applications in Node. In short, what Express does is it lets you connect a URL to a piece of code that will be executed when someone tries to access that URL. So that's PaaS server, the repo. And in their collection of repositories, you'll find another one called the PaaS server example. So what this repo is, is actually what I've just described. It is the PaaS server code wrapped in the Express.js framework and they provided us a sample project to get us started. So the PaaS server example project just creates an Express application. It then connects a URL slash PaaS to the PaaS server code. So I can show you by going to the index.js file and we'll go through a lot of this later on, but you'll see here the mount point slash PaaS and what this is saying is when anybody hits the slash pars URL, then use this API. What is this API? Well, you can see here, this API is an instance of our pars server configured exactly as we want our pars server configured. And that's all that Express is doing for us here is connecting slash pars to the pars server. And then when we run this, when we run this pars server example, anytime you send an API request to slash pars, it will be handled by the pars server. But since Express is a web framework, if you scroll down, you can see it's also letting us serve other files from Express. So if you were to hit slash test, it would then send a file back to the user of test.html. And we'll be going through this in more detail later on, how to add other files to your server so that you can perhaps serve a landing page for your product. So that's the PaaS server example repo. And what we've created in CodeCraft is we have forked, we've copied the PaaS server example repo, and we've created our own PaaS server CodeCraft. This is just the same as the PaaS server example code, but I've just added some more advanced settings. These are settings that are needed to explain some of the more advanced concepts that we'll be teaching on the course. So this is the repo that I want you to use when you're creating your own PaaS server. Okay, so the first thing I want you to do is I want you to actually create your own forked copy of this repo. Now a forked copy just means that, it, it literally just means it's gonna copy it to your own space on GitHub so that any changes you make to it will be saved in your own space. So to do that, you do need to have an account on GitHub. You don't have to spend any money. You can just create an account on GitHub. Once you've got it created, just click on this fork button 
And then if it gives you some options, just, just choose the account into which you want to fork this repo. So I've got a personal account. That should complete pretty quickly. So now if you look at the URL, it doesn't say CodeCraft Pro, it should say whatever your username is. The next thing we want to do is we want to clone this onto our computer. Now to do the next step, you must have Git installed. If you don't have Git installed, please go into the appendix of this course to see instructions on how to make sure you've got Git installed on your computer. So the first thing we do is we open up a terminal. Actually, let me just copy that. Go back into our terminal. Go to the place where you want the code to live. So I have a folder where I stick all my code. You can type git clone, the path to the repository. And if you want, you can just type in the folder that you want to use, which you will create, which will it will clone the code into. If you don't provide it, it will create a folder called parse server code craft. But I already have a folder in this directory called parse server code code craft. So I want to call it something else. I'm going to call it parse server tests. And now if I go into parse server test. Let's just have a look at what it's copied over. So now you can see it's actually added in. It's actually downloaded the code from GitHub and put it onto our local machine. So now we've cloned it. The next section we're going to talk about how to actually run it.